I'm Jim Preston, and my wife and I are intermediate riders. We love mountain bike road trips in California, Nevada, Utah, Colorado, and Arizona. We never tire of the rocky trails of southern Utah and the Sierras. Pure fun once you get over the terror, and a trail bike will get you there. After several years of research and demoing trail bikes at mountain bike festivals and events, hundreds of conversations on trails across the U.S. West, plus riding my trail bike, I want to share what I've learned about the trail category of mountain bikes. What do most intermediates want? I would say exploration and adventure on scenic trails, improved health and calorie burn, safety and control at relatively slow speeds on technical trails, fun and satisfaction as a bike makes it easier to achieve higher technical skills, comfort for longer rides, highly reliable components and less maintenance or breakdowns, pride of ownership, and brand status among our peers. Notice that I did not mention racing. I've never heard an intermediate say they wanted a bike because some famous racer rides it. However, racing is most of what the bike companies use in their ads and social media posts. They brag about how their bikes are designed for racing and list the races won. It isn't mountain biking for us. The bike enthusiasts in bike shops and companies often assume that we belong in cross-country bikes. Wrong. The emerging trail bike category is a long-needed response from the industry. Of course, they focus on racing them, but trail bikes are great for intermediates also. First, let's discuss the most common types of bikes. Cross-country is for riding rather smooth tread with minimal technical challenges from roots, rocks, and ruts. Trail is for non-aggressive riding of trails with significant technical challenges. All mountain is for highly aggressive riding of technical trails. Downhill is for aggressive riding of high consequence technical trails. By high consequence, I mean a mistake could cause major injury or death. Those are the guys with the full face helmets. Second, when do you need a trail bike? When you enjoy riding trails with the all-mountain riders, but you are slower and hike the bike more often. When you want more adventurous rides, but lack the time or interest to acquire those skills. Everything about a mountain bike is controversial. My advice is only for my non-aggressive riding style. Well, now that I've spent a year on a trail bike, I'm getting a bit more aggressive and loving it. Frame geometry is a huge topic with many options. Unless you love engineering and ergonomic details, you'll probably want to avoid those discussions. I found that most of the specifications aren't very important for intermediate riders, so I'll hit on only a few key issues. The head tube angle is important for rollover on technical trails and control during steep descents. A trail bike should have around 67 to 68 degrees of head tube angle. This is considered slack compared to the cross-country bike, but not slack enough for the all-mountain bikes. With this angle, you can hit rocks and logs and climb over them, but the bike will still be easy to steer when climbing. I tested this often, and the rocks and the cross-country uh, head tube angles are just not good enough. Chain stay length is sometimes considered important for intermediates. Short means faster, tighter turns, Longer means more stable riding. As an intermediate, you want all of the above, which you can't have. It won't be an important issue for most riders, so let's ignore it. The rear suspension is a complicated engineering feat between usually Fox and the bike company. For the better bike brands, the rear suspension is always very good to great, and you will notice little difference. Yeti Switch Infinity seems to give me a smoother ride on bouncy trails such as Rock and A near Moab, which may matter to you depending on the trails you ride. You want around 120 to 130 millimeters of rear suspension travel. There are occasional exceptions due to the suspension design. Carbon versus aluminum. You save about a pound to a pound and a half with a carbon frame. I like the ride of a carbon frame a little better but it could be just perception. You need to decide if this is worth the additional cost of carbon. The advantages and disadvantages either way are not that much of an issue for intermediates. 
Buy the bike you can afford and start riding soon. Frame size. Go with the manufacturer's recommendations and move on to other issues. I ride mediums and larges, even in the same model, and could care less about the differences. The human body and the mind adopts quickly. Bottom bracket height. Pedal clearance is critical if you want to play in the big rocks and logs. When you need power, you don't want your pedals hitting stuff. Also, replacing smashed pedals gets expensive after a while. Aesthetics. You want the color and frame design you are proud to ride. If the front triangle is an organic design and the swing arm is geometric with straight lines, then you may become irritated at the design disconnect after a while. Pride of ownership is important, and it isn't all about the technical specifications. Most of what you own has design coherence, and your bike should also. Let's cover some key components. Wheel size is very controversial. We found that the 29 inch wheels give us best rollover on technical trails and let us ride more technical than our skill level. If you forget to pop up the front wheel to climb a log or a ledge, then the big wheel will usually let you ride it anyway. When we demo 27.5 inch wheels, we feel like we're back to the old 26 inch standard, which few riders use anymore. However, for people under 5'5 or so, the 27 inch wheels, or so-called 650B, are big wheels. We tested the 29ers on many switchbacks and they get around fine at intermediate speeds, rather slow. Aggressive riders may have a different result. They are looking for playful, agile rides, which typically isn't an intermediate issue. The correct fork is critical. Intermediates who want to ride the rocks should have between 130 and 140 millimeters of fork travel, although bigger and more aggressive riders are using 150 millimeters. 120 millimeters is less forgiving, and I learned that by doing an end over on the Holy Cross Trail near Grand Junction. The combination of a steep head tube angle and not enough fork travel is bad for us intermediates who aren't all that agile on bikes. Tires that come with the bike are usually fine. Decent tires are all you need. I'm recommending tubeless for the trails we ride because most riders experience fewer flats. Check locally to see what riders prefer for your favorite trails. For areas where punctures are common, you'll probably want a sealant such as stands in your tire or your tube. Stands should be replaced at least once a year because it hardens and turns into a glob. Pedals are important. The Shimano XT Trail pedals are fantastic for intermediate riders, but for some reason the bike shops don't want you to know about them. They include the popular SPD clip-in mechanism. The XT Trails give you the option to click in with SPD cleats for full power climbs or more control on technical trails, or ride them like flats through the gnar when you're too nervous to clip in. I've tested these in the Santa Cruz Mountains, Fruta, Colorado, Moab, and the Zion area of Utah. My feet aren't slipping off with the specialized Rhine shoes. You want a shallow outer arch shoe and there seem to be many models available. Also, don't fear clipping and unclipping. Yes, you will have a few falls at first, but the benefits are worth it. Don't get buried in the details of the gears, shifters, crank, handlebars, and stem. For the most part, an intermediate won't notice much difference in performance between the better quality components. In the Shimano line, select XLS or XT level components and you'll be fine. Replace components later if you develop preferences. SRAM makes great components, but I'm not that familiar with them. 111 versus 210 gearing. The issue is whether you want a front derailleur or not and the gear range. The one means one chain ring up front. The SRAM 111 gearing is wonderful in the desert where climbs are often short. There is no left shifter to deal with and it's lighter weight. But myself and other intermediates are concerned about not having enough low gear for the long climbs. We need all the uphill help we can get. I've been told that the 111 can be geared low enough for long climbs, but those telling me this are fit young men who ride three times a week. I have climbed a few miles with a 111 in the Santa Cruz Mountains, but that was on a 27.5 wheel. 
so not the best test. It didn't climb like my 29er with a 210 gear setup. Brakes. Everyone is into hydraulic disc brakes. They are more powerful and effective than earlier technologies. If you buy a designated trail bike from a major bike company, they'll have an appropriate rotor size for you. Let's pass on discussing that. Handlebars and stem. The handlebar width and stem length are all about your body and riding position on a specific bike. Get help from your local bike shop or bike company representatives at demo events. For the most part, we ride with short stems now. Wider handlebars will give you more control, but they require some agility on the narrow trails through trees and large boulders. The width should open up your chest for breathing and be comfortable for long rides. Whatever the manufacturer put on a pre-built bike is almost always good enough. If you are building up a bike from the frame, rare for intermediates, then get into this issue more. A dropper seat post is one of the best investments you can make. It will help you reach a higher skill level with less effort. You will be in better positions faster for climbing and descent and have more control of the bike at key times. Any of the infinitely adjustable posts will do. We found the Thompson Elite Dropper has the smoothest and most responsive action, but also consider the new highly adjustable specialized command post. Avoid the three position posts. Strong skilled riders have different needs than intermediates. They seek a different experience. While a 10 to 20% improvement in component or frame performance makes a huge difference to an intermediate, an advanced rider may care less because they're riding the bike differently with more agility and skill. Intermediates need the control and safety provided by a full suspension bike when riding the rocks, roots, and ruts. Unfortunately, the bike reviews online are by advanced riders who bomb down trails at speeds we wouldn't think of. I find it hard to relate to their riding and analysis. Always try to demo bikes in trail conditions before buying. Bike festivals such as Outer Bike in Moab and Whistler, the Fruit of Fat Tire Festival, the Santa Cruz Mountain Bike Festivals and others, local bike shop rentals and traveling bike company demos are an excellent way to sample bikes and refine your ideas. Trail bikes must be tested in gnarly conditions to understand what works best for you. If you can afford to walk into a bike shop and pay retail, then go for it. If not, then ask about last year's models or used rental bikes. Most shops sell their rental bikes at a big discount before and during the winter. Online shops such as JensenUSA.com are a good option if you know what you want. Some bike companies, such as Yeti, have their demos online for sale. My wife bought her Yeti this way. Craigslist, eBay are options, but be sure to ask for their purchase receipt first. Avoid stolen bikes. Most mountain bikes are fine for women or men. However, a few bike companies are releasing women's bikes. The frames are the same or similar to the regular frames, but the handlebars, saddles, and colors are possibly more appealing to women. Whatever you do, get off that old bike that you love and try the new ones. Bike technology has made huge improvements and you'll ride better, more often, and further than you ever imagined when you're on a recent model quality bike. Have fun!